What do we change and do? And, and I think things are going to change, too. And if you look back in history, you see that it, it is about every 200 years, something drastically changes in a society, in a culture, in a governmental system. We're due for that change. Just on a, a historical perspective shows us that, yeah, something's coming. Have you seen the case that I've made on um, Cloward and Piven and that they are intentionally trying to spend us into oblivion? Yes. Do you believe it? I do. I do believe that. Because again, Glenn, we can't be so stupid as to see these common sense solutions. Hey, government, quit thinking that the solution to the health care problem today is for government to take it over and run a system better than the private sector system. We see something like that. We scratch our heads and say, well, what are we missing? It, it, it's a ridiculous notion that the White House has to take over health care and think that they can run it better. We cannot be missing something so, so blatantly. There, it has to be purposeful what, it, what they are doing. Otherwise, otherwise, I would say, Glenn, that there is no hope, that, that there are no solutions. Is, <clears throat> you see that the Fed made the, you know, Exxon had... Um, their record profit a couple of years ago is $45 billion. <clears throat> the Fed just had record profit, um, over $50 billion. Nobody's having hearings on the Fed. Nobody is looking for a windfall profit tax on the Fed. Nobody seems to, we, we can't even open the Fed's books. Yeah. How do, yeah. Where do we stand on the that, Fed? That, that, it's so ironic there, too, especially that you bring up this, this private sector company, Exxon, because in Alaska, we saw what was going on with Exxon, and we did have our own hearings on what was going on with this private sector um, company and, and how could uh, the state of Alaska adjust some things to make sure that there was a share of the resource. Yet you're right. Nobody has even lifted a finger to go that route with the Fed. And it's a scary thing. It, it, it's one of those things that we're thankful for, Glenn, that you're bringing this to light. And um, I don't know anybody else who is, certainly nobody else who has a platform or the megaphone like you do. <clears throat> and we have to take a break here. I just want to end with this question. Is universal health care constitutional? I don't believe that it is constitutional. I believe that it violates the Tenth Amendment. I believe it, it usurps states' rights. I believe that uh, it is, um, aside from the unconstitutional aspect of this, I think it is the most wrong-headed thing that Obama is trying to cram down our throat. And I cannot believe, I know that people are outraged about it, but I cannot believe that those on Capitol Hill are still not listening to the outrage of the people and still want to see this thing so get crammed down our throat. Yourself, why, you have to ask yourself why. They're all throwing themselves on the altar of this. The bribes, the corruption, the coercion, the SEIU, break your kneecaps kind of yeah. stuff. Do you even, I said a year ago, uh, it was a year ago Christmas, a year from now, you will not recognize your country. Mm -hmm. Put yourself back a year ago last Christmas. Go into a coma. Wake up. Do you recognize your country? Already, this change is uh, creating this unrecognizable system that we're a part of. But, but um, yeah, with the, um, especially with the health care, when, when incumbents are even willing to give up their, their power, their seat, when they're saying, hey, if it costs me my seat in Congress, it costs me my seat in Congress. I'm going to cram this thing through anyway. That's a scary, scary thing to consider. It's not if they're doing it on principles. It is if they're doing it on for bribes, money, power, position. Like I want to know what their principles are then. I want to know why they think that exactly this is right. principled at all. Exactly right. Okay, back in just a second. Back with a full hour uh, with uh, Governor Sarah Palin. Painful yet? Because we've got <laughs> we've got stacks of documents. Come on, just... <laughs> bring it on. Let's go. How, what is it? What is it like um, to be you? To walk in and you just never know. Do you feel like outside of the people? Do you feel like there's anybody that you can trust? 
outside of the people um, and outside of my family, again, it's very, very difficult to to find those whom I would trust with my children's life. You were on, uh, yeah, very difficult. Yeah. Um, uh, you were on the uh, most admired list. You were number two. Or most curious list. The most curious. Why was it the most curious? Well, it could have been. Are you sure it was admired? <laughs> and I yeah. Yeah, it was the most hmm. admired list. Okay. Um, uh, who beat you? It was Hillary Clinton, which I find interesting. Uh, but she's been... She always wins. Yeah, she always wins. Cool. Um, she's the anti-Susan Lucci of this list. <laughs> um, you um, were number two. When you saw it, what went through your mind? And what did the list tell you? Um, a list like that is like a poll, Glenn. And, and I, I can't put a whole lot of stock or, or faith or hope in a poll like that to show me what I need to do, where I need to go next. I, I, I can keep everything in, in pretty healthy perspective because of my kids keeping me grounded. It's interesting <clears throat> because um, I was on the list. I was fourth on the list. And my reaction was I'm sandwiched between Nelson Mandela and the Pope. And I thought, this is the most ridiculous list I've ever seen. Uh -huh. Because one of these things just doesn't belong. But my thought on it was it shows how desperate people are or how few choices there are. That's got to be for, what it is. For people to see other people who say, I think they believe it, and I think whether I agree or disagree with them, they'll risk everything. Mm -hmm to be able to stand and tell the truth. Mm -hmm. You see any truth to that? I, I see truth to that in our society, in our culture, that there are so many Americans who believe that there aren't a whole lot of individuals that they can trust. So now let me go back to um, um, putting everything up on the line and the paradigm changing. Harry Reid's been in trouble this week <clears throat> saying, you know, just a stupid comment. Yeah. So um, cool. Trent Lott, I, you know, he was drummed out of the party. Um, what are your thoughts on the Harry Reid thing first? Uh, I don't believe that he's a racist, but I believe that his comments, you can't defend them. Right. I, I want to see him go anyway, uh, you know, for, because... Yeah, why the, take him out this way? Let the people decide. Right. The, and the people are going to decide, and I think he is going to go, and okay. it's time. I think, I mean, the, the, the double standard is so clear oh. in all of the games that are played. And, so hypocritical. Yeah. It just makes my stomach yeah. sick. I don't yes, even wanna, yes. No. I mean, we don't need to even go there because everybody knows it's double standard. Um, however, with, with that being said, I think the paradigm is about to change. These people have overplayed their hands. Mm -hmm. You have a handicapped child. I have a handicapped child. Um, I'm not going to call anybody handicapable. I think it's insulting to everybody. Um, first of all, as a mom, has that made you, did I just anger you? Uh, no, for some okay. reason I wasn't offended. Okay, no. good. Um, the, uh, this PC thing, no. I think a lot of people pe played this PC game for a long time because, A, we're good people. Nobody wants to hurt anybody's feelings, generally. Um, and, and B, Americans just want to get along. It's just like, I just, it's not worth mm -hmm. it, just get along. Mm -hmm. I think that's changing. I think people at home... You can call them racist, you can call them bigots, you can call them hate mongers, you can say they're starving children, you can say anything. People are starting to say, I know the truth. Mm -hmm. I don't care mm -hmm. what you say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agree or disagree? I, I agree that you're seeing that, that shift and thank God for that because look at what some other countries are shifting into. Look what's going on in France where that psychological abuse, th those words spoken that aren't politically correct and accepted in, in that country um, will be allowed, it will be deemed illegal. Now some who want us to turn into a country like that scare the heck out of me and unfortunately some of those people are leading our country today. You were, um, as you bring up France, you were telling me before we went on the air Stuff I didn't know about the Statue of Liberty and the 24 windows or... 25 windows. What is yeah. this? Gems representing uh, natural resources in our, in our nation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't well, I had my son Google for me real really? quick. What does everything mean? <laughs> what, what are the symbols? Do you think there would be a test on this? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. He's going to 
to do a gotcha on what do the seven no. points mean? And yes, no. so I, I Google, I, I had no, track Google the, real quick. The seven, the seven points are just rays of light. They're not crap. It's not really a crown. It's seven. It's the rays of light. Have you ever well, seen the Michelangelo uh, Moses where yeah. he has horns? Okay. That's a misinterpretation from the Latin. It can be interpreted rays of light or horns. Okay. And somehow or another they interpreted it horns, but it's actually just the rays of light. Well, so full of symbolism, though, and those seven points represent our seas, our continents. And anyway, my son, I, I asked him very quickly, tell me what all this means. And he says, quite timely, Mom, I'll tell you what Statue of Liberty means, because I just got a tattoo of the Statue of Liberty on my arm. Thanks, Track, for letting me know that. <laughs>